Hello, hello, and we are live. It's Reika Kovacin here, and I'm making or remaking this journal page today. Let me grab my chair and check that this is actually going <laughs> someplace that the live is okay. least I think I can see myself on the group. So hopefully, hopefully it's okay. I have my computer just there, so if you can see and hear me, then please, please let me know <laughs> that we are okay. Hi Mateus. Oh, thank you. I will have happy time when I'm crafting. It's eight, almost 8 p.m. here in Finland and it's still very much light outside. I'm really loving Finnish spring and summer because of the amount of light we have. I do have my ring light ready there. So if, if the sun sets before we are done, then we have light. Thank you for letting me know, Mateus. Hi, Janice. I'm not sure if I'm saying your names right. Sorry about that. Finnish is, well, an easy language in such way that everything is pronounced as it's written. So <laughs> there's an, some other difficulties with that that language, but that's easy pronunciation. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Thank you for joining tonight or day, depending where you are. So this is something we are doing in three minutes. So if you are a coffee or tea drinker, you still have time to grab yourself some hot beverage or glass of water, or Canada, Quebec. Yes, now I remember. So you enjoy the light as well, I'm guessing. Like dark during the winter time, but then the huge amount of light during spring and summer. Hey, Lena. So this is quite a simple. Oh little page but even though there's some stamping I'm not using any ink. Hi Diane! How's UK? <laughs> yeah well even though there's some stamping I'm not using any ink I'm actually using the acrylics for the stamping and I'm sharing a trick how to do that or how to do that maybe more easily or Let's be honest, the way I do it. <laughs> hey, Dina. Very hot and sunny today. Sounds lovely. It's been mostly sunny here in Helsinki today, but not hot. It's very much spring here up north, so it's maybe plus 10 or below that. Celsius, that is. So, quite chilly still. Just one more minute and then we'll start. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat during the live. If you have any questions, just by all means ask anytime. If I somehow miss them, I'll go through all the comments afterwards and then can reply. Hey, Deja! As it seems that there is quite a few fans here, I'll just share a couple of lines in Finnish and then switch back to English. Eli hei hei, kiitoksia kun olette taas täällä katselemassa pääasiallisesti kielenä siis englanti, mutta totta kai kuten aina suomeksi voi kysyä vastaan sitten, mikäli sen huomaan, yritän pitää silmällä tuota chattia, mutta jos menee ohi, 
niin mä käyn kaikki kommentit sitten läpi myöhemmin. Kiitoksia ja ei muuta kuin ruvetaan hommiin. So it's 8 p.m. here in Finland. <laughs> Depending where you are, it's probably different time. Let's get started. So this is something I'm redoing today. A little art journal page. And I think I put in the advert, so to say, that I'm speaking about how to keep the project cohesive and how to start. So let's get started and I'll talk about more about that starting point. There's a huge number of ways, of course, how to start. You can start by slapping some paint on top of a piece of paper or you can use a pattern paper to get started. But this time I'm using a book page to kind of, well, inspire me. And of course, these are from a novel. So there is a story going on. I could draw inspiration from that. But there's another way. And that's kind of making my own little story, making book poetry, let's say. Let me grab this one to show you. It. Because this whole page was inspired kind of with the words. It says, bouquet of branches, the colors medieval captured around her. So I was going for this composition already, but then I remembered the bouquet of branches and added this one. So kind of drawing inspiration from the words. So what I have here are the book pages. And I actually cheated a little because I already circle the words I'm going to use because I was afraid that during the live I can't find a single story. So I just used a pencil, gathered a couple of words and then I will coat this with gesso, white gesso. So all these words are going to be more prominent and the rest are more just white background. But as book pages are really thin so they tend to warp easily with the paper fibers reacting to moisture. I'm actually adhering this to a piece of white cardstock to make it sturdier first. I could use a gel, like one of Finnabar's soft body, soft gels, but a dry adhesive is a bit easier again no buckling with this one because the fibers won't react to anything any sort of moisture so let me just trim this a little bit smaller approximately like that and then let's put it to the paper hey Asta, hey Johanna, hey Pakati Okay, let's try another corner. There we go. Come on. And here we go. I'll go with this story. I did do another one today, but I'm thinking I'm going. Well, you can decide. Do you want a story about the new coat or a story about Violet? This is the photo I'm going to use, a little Tim Holtz paper dolls. I was thinking about the new coat, but I'll see the first comment and use that, so there's not too much weight. Do you want new coat or violet? New coat. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Let's go with new coat. Just adding it here. Then I could trim it now, but let's do it a little bit later. 
as always the start is a little bit tedious or nothing drastic is happening because now I start painting this white I could use a palette knife as you probably know to spread gesso but as I now want a certain little areas not to be covered I find it easier to work with a brush let's take a smaller one for these little caps here And this gesso layer will, well, it has a couple of different purposes. First of all, it highlights the words. It kind of highlights the story. I then kind of want to uh, tell, let's use that word. And hides the other other storylines that are there to turn the actual written book to, to something else but also as you know it's a primer so I'm creating a base for the colorants coming on top so they don't get absorbed into the really soft paper that this old book paper is. So when I then start adding mediums on top, I have a little more play time, not needing to be really quick or worrying that the paint, for example, or ink, if I would be using that, are getting into the paper but instead there's a little layer of gesso blocking and priming the surface you can go all the way to completely white if you want to but even just a one layer is enough to highlight the contrast between the treated and untreated areas and as you can see also the story that I'm trying to get across is kind of in the bottom of the page because I want most of it at least <laughs> to be showing after I have the composition done Naturally, this could be just a jumping off point and you could first do the story and then just cover parts of it. But as I wanted this to be kind of the journaling, I started the journey, journey, sorry, <laughs> the story in the bottom part. So there would be a chance that actually it will be visible after the whole thing is done. Now let me grab the heat tool really quickly. Sorry about that. If you have watched my videos or my, my Facebook lives before, then you probably noticed that often I start our journaling with a kind of extra page. It's not directly to the journal. I'm not quite sure why, <laughs> but probably it's got to do with a little bit of being afraid to mess something which is fun really a fun notion because you can't really go wrong with art journaling but also this prevents any mediums from going through
through the journal to the other page. So it's an extra layer. And also, if I'm creating a background on my own, like using stencils and stamps and stuff, I usually have extra, which I can then use in another project, kind of have something ready already. But no, this one is our background. Then let's do a layer on top and then we start stamping to add a little bit of shine to this page. As you can see here, I used dual effect paste. Oh, sorry, my pronunciation ain't the best today. I chose the color blue opals because at the moment I'm really drawn or actually have been drawn to this color combo for a while now, mixing blues with browns. I think that works wonderfully together. Let me get the stencil. So not exceeding because there's one highlighted word. I don't want to cover that. I'm mixing the paste a little so I get all the goodies. And then just use a palette knife. The dual effect paste are a little bit harder to get through the stencil because of the, well, dual effect, but there's little grains in the paste. So it seems that there's, well, product left on top. Here we go. And what you can do with it is to use a brush and some water and make splashes. I was trying to avoid to get too much stenciling on top of the words I want to be in the finished page, but with this splashes I'm not that worried if there would be a huge blob on top then that might be an issue but you can still make out the words even though there's a couple of splashes on top this one is actually again acrylic based product so if you don't clean the stencil right away just put it in a bucket of water to keep it wet until you have time to clean it. So there's a bucket underneath my table and I just pushed it there. Now let me move this aside and let's start stamping and hopefully that will air dry while we are stamping. Like I said, I'm sharing a little trick Sorry. to Stamp with acrylic paint and that trick is a gelatin printing plate. If you don't have a ready plate then using a piece of plastic for example works as well where you might need to add a little bit more paint or do it a couple of times more than using with a gel printing plate. And well, as you can see, I don't clean my plate. That's my way of working, so don't get alarmed about it. Let's do brown first. You could use uh, just a brush and brush some of the acrylic to the stamp, but there's an issue maybe getting too much there. And kind of getting the paint to the grooves as well. But by creating myself a kind of ink pad by using a gel plate, in this case, 
or a piece of plastic. I can get a little kind of ink pad and a nicer effect with the paint. It's a thinner layer this way. So I'm just brayering and trying to work fast so it doesn't dry to my stamp. Let's add a little bit more. This is liquid acrylic, so really light acrylic paint. You could use sturdier, but then you need to be even maybe more quick with stamping so you don't get residue on the stamps. And I just threw it in the bucket along with the others. So I'm then able to clean it afterwards. Then let's do some stamping with that. Swap a color. Dave, whoopsie daisy. The first one was burnt sienna, and this one is Prussian blue. Now there's way too much there. Let's see. Yeah, a bit too heavy handed. This way the pattern doesn't come that clean if I have a too thick of a layer of paint. Let's do one more of those. There. And then let's put these to the water bucket. If you somehow get the acrylic drying on top of your stamp, then hand sanitizer, which probably we all have <laughs> nowadays, that dilutes acrylic paint. So you can use that to get clean the stamps a little. But the best is to work a somewhat fast and clean the stamp before the acrylic paint gets to that. That's a start for another page, maybe. A bit dark, but you can add what gesso and splashes on top. <laughs> Let me put the brayer also in there. So that's my little tip of getting nice crisp images using acrylic paint with stamps. Red rubber works better in that way because it takes more wear and tear, those stamps. But to me, stamps are tools, so I'm not that scared uh, that the paint might dry on top. Of course, these teeny tiny details, if there's a huge residue of paint, they might get lost. But still, you can see the butterfly, even though, for example, these two had a little bit too much paint on them. Hey, Pakarita! And then let's see if this is... And I would say no, that ain't just dry yet. We need to use the heat tool again. Sorry about this. It's dry on the surface, but not inside. But let's try if I can make it work. Hmm. Maybe that would put the stamp. There's sample page here. I think I wrote also that giving tips how to start, which would be this kind of book poetry. You make up your own story and draw inspiration from that. That's kind of one option. <laughs> To start the page or how do you start creating an art journal page and then I think I said I use acrylic paints a couple of ways 
first one was this stamping and then the second one is this watercolor effect here. Moikka moi Mari! Aloitellaan vasta. Muutama juttu tehty. Pääasiallinen rakentaminen on vielä ihan vaiheessa. Mari was asking what have we done so far. So we have just made the background. A little bit of book poetry, circling words and then painting the rest with white gesso. Kind of highlighting that story that is in the page. Then some dimensional stenciling using jewel effect paste. And then some stamping using acrylic paint by using a gel plate to make kind of an acrylic stamp pad to make it easier. And now we are adding some colorants to the background. Because of the gesso layer, I'm able to do this. Because if there wouldn't be the gesso blocking the liquid acrylic from accessing to the paper fibers, then these would be, well, it would be like this. Soaking into the paper immediately. And as you know, Acrylic paint is waterproof after drying, it should be. So even if I add water on top, nothing happens. But when there's gesso underneath, I'm able to move the color around. Let me get some of this actually off. We want more watercolor look. So even though I have a little, like, really big blob, I'm able to move it around, mix the colors, and that's all because of the gesso underneath. If I wouldn't have that, there would be just a blob of color. I want some brown mixed in there. Because together, these two colors, for example, make a wonderful, a little bit greenish, like an olive green tone. I find that really fascinating color. Of course, this is a warm brownish tone, and that's a warm blue tone, so they make up a green, but still, it's fun to see how they react with one another. Then of course, splashes. A co-worker of mine was saying just today that I have a distinctive style. And while I'm not sure about that, then splashes is something that I usually can't finish a project without. Let's again try. <laughs> Almost dry, not quite, but thereabouts. Then we need a piece of cardstock. And the rest from this double sided adhesive. And my scissors are someplace. That's for layering. And these are for elements, like for little decorative embellishments. Stamps are wonderful for creating a massive amount of embellishments or background for that matter, like pen and paper, because you can use them all over and over and over again. I can link the blog post 
for the sample project because I've got it all the product names there if you want to know from which stamp sets these are the scissors and the little butterflies moth and then that book print that's one of my favorite stamps So I'm using the kind of layering material as it is. Oh, actually, I didn't share which product I used to stamp it on. It was actually a book page as well, without any writing though. So it matches perfectly with the background. It's those extra pages you sometimes get in a book. So I used that as my material to stamp on. And now I'm mounting it on top of cardstock to make it sturdier. Maria, yes, I'll add the link. Do you want it now or shall I do it afterwards? Now there's a little gap because I'm just copy pasting it there, but afterwards, no gap. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about not saying what I stamped on. My, my kind of mistake. <laughs> Afterwards, fine. Okay, perfect. So, let me cut a couple of butterflies real quickly. I usually cut out the antennae and, and these parts. <laughs> from butterflies because they tend to look a little bit chunky. I can't cut such a fine line. If I'm doing like fussy cutting. You can use a craft knife, of course. Some people are masterful with that. I'm way better with my scissors than with a craft knife. So I'm using that. Let's put that aside. I need just this largest one. If you are new to fussy cutting, then my tip is that scissors stay put. They just, I just open and close them. And as you can see, my left hand is doing all the work, turning the piece to the scissors, so it's quite fast and ergonomic as well. Because if I would be turning scissors, then quite easily, I can't even do it, <laughs> quite fast, it would result of my hands and arms being in peculiar positions. And when you are fussy cutting, your eye kind of fills in the rest. So if there's small details, like for example, these little uh, scallop edge on the butterfly, I just cut a straight line, but your mind brain is kind of filling that in that it looks like there is a scallop edge. So we have the embellishments, we have the background. Then let's start doing the composition. Let me put, for example, this to the side so you can see where we are going. And there's one more element in the layering and it's this one. Can you guess what this is? If you have followed my, well, lives or my blog or Instagram, you know what this is, but let's, let's see if you, if you know. <laughs> what material is that? And this, yeah, <laughs> you knew it. It's tea bags, used and dried tea bags. The material is really fantastic. I love the kind of tissue paper look of it. It's really delicate and I just love the tea tones that are naturally in it. 
And in this place, I should say thank you to Seiya, who has donated this, these to me. I'm a really heavy tea drinker, but she gathered a bag of tea bags for me, and I still have some left, and it's wonderful to use them. Here's some, let's do a bigger piece, and then maybe a smaller piece on top, some there, and maybe even this way, no, that's covering too much, this way, am I actually off focus, okay, here is a better Do you want to see that again? Was that too fast? Because I'm just pulling some verticals and horizontals kind of together. And then this one is going here on top. It's just a little composition. Nothing too much to think about. But let's do it again. Just if you if you missed it. So a bigger piece is usually where I start then as this is vertical then we need some kind of horizontal pieces something underneath something on top let's put actually that one up and this one down so that kind of creates a ground for the person coming on top and then we when we have the composition done it's the magic tool of stapler, adding the layers together. And that one is going to come. Now we have, it needs to be there. If I want a new code to be seen, then we need the foam tape. Let me add that one first to the background. I'm using foam tape, but you could use just adhesive. I would recommend using uh, craft glue rather than just double-sided tape for this layer because of the dimensional paste underneath. But you could also use a piece of cardboard box and even let it show through the layers. Then this one is coming on top. Then we need the little twigs. I have way too many for this one. make them curve to the same direction and all the ends maybe I'm snapping this one a little bit shorter yeah there and then let's take the twine to make a little broomstick <laughs> this would be a fun Easter project as well Thank you, Maria. I think that's really kind of easy when you think of it as horizontals and verticals. Of course, you could mix in some round shapes as well to draw the eye in, but really not, not to overthink it. Intersections are the way to make the eye to be drawn in in that so whenever there is a cross kind of area eye is naturally drawn in so just twine making a little bouquet of branches or yes bouquet of branches was the word now the new coat is being hidden. Let me tear a little piece so it can be more visible. And then let's use... 
Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, naturally everybody has uh, their own way of layering. This is just my way, but I tend to be, well, I work quite fast. And part of that maybe is that I don't ponder the decisions too long. It's more like tick, 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 I'm done. And part of the, making the composition for me is to use the horizontals and verticals. And the easy part is, or to make it easier for myself, is to use one bigger element, kind of grounding element that might not be the bottom layer or the top layer, more like, like I used here, putting something underneath and something on top, but that makes it easier. And usually that grounding element or the main element is approximately the same size, or a little bit bigger than my focal point. If I'm doing a scrapbooking layout, then that's the size of the photo. And here, if you can look, this element compared to this is quite the same. And it kind of acts as the main background. I'm now using the twigs as they're kind of, they're standing on top of the branches. Then, Oh, and I promised to talk about how to go make a cohesive project. Big words, big words. But in this case, I was referring to use, using the same colorants throughout. That's something I really quite often do. But that's at least one trick you can use to kind of bind in the layers in the background together with the layers coming up on top because the same colorants for example in this page i used to paint the background like the watercolor effect there and then the stamp stamped elements so immediately that's a cohesive project because it's the same colors used in a couple of ways but throughout the different layers Thank you, Diane. Now I just made a little kind of wreath using the twine and I'm adding it here underneath. And as you can see from this page as well, I only glued it from one place. I want it to be fluffy. I don't want it to be too bound the shape because that way it kind of loses its its nature if that makes any sense if I would glue it down the whole way it would look more like wire than fluffy thread and then let's add the stamped elements. I'm actually thinking maybe here the scissors could be on this side where I put them. Oops, I can't actually see that. <laughs> Come on, go through there. Yes, let's do that. I'm drawn, drawn the idea of them being here. because it's a story about the new coat. So maybe these are the scissors of the tailor. Then let's add a butterfly there. I'm now thinking I'm putting the button actually in here rather than here because of the composition. Here I had a kind of empty area in the corner, which I wanted to fill with something but here the story comes closer to the edge so i'm thinking i'm putting the buttons here but shall i put just one butterfly or two because there's two ladies maybe there should be two actually i want that darker one here 
Hmm. Let's do that. I'm adding the glue just to the center of the moth or the butterfly. So the wings are a little bit raised, so there's more, more dimension. Like that. And then the last thing is to add the buttons. There's two ways. You could just, well, I've, well, there's a million ways, but if you want the sewn effect, you could actually just add the thread to them and make a little knot and hide it underneath. But as I'm working on, on a separate piece of paper, rather than directly, no, wait, let's put it this way, directly on my journal, I can actually sew these. So I'm putting the buttons, whoopsie daisy, where I want them to be. And come on, please stay put. Thank you. And I'm marking the spots. There and then you should be somewhere. You might put the hole go there. You can't probably see anything. Let's make more prominent holes. It's all about the little, little details, because of course you could just adhere these in place or use um, double-sided tape to mount. But the little stone detail kind of makes sense in my book, especially with this new coat story. And it's a fun, fun little thing. If you're working on your actual journal, naturally you can sew there as well. Just remember that then if you're doing a spread, for example, the stitches might come across to the previous page. But if you're especially working with a separate sheet, then this is easy. And then you have options to leave the ends of the thread showing, kind of starting from the top. Or in this case, I don't want them to be seen. I want the buttons to be seen and not like as a subtle detail and the more emphasis on this one. Then I'm just hiding, hiding the knot to the back. Just one more time. My needle is a little bit sticky because there's the double-sided adhesive here, keeping the book page in place. So if that happens to you too, again, hand sanitizer or then nail polish remover are wonderful to get the needle or scissors cleaned if they start to be sticky. And then just a couple of knots. And in this case, I'm able to cut the threads quite short. And what I really like, I don't have to put the ends, kind of hide them anywhere because they are going to be underneath. Nobody can see them. And as the last little thing, I'm using double-sided tape and go around the edges and then I can mount this page to my journal. In this case I didn't measure the page 
because it is what it is because of the book page but if you have options like you have a really huge book you are using then you might want to take some measurements so your page will go nicely to the journal. This one now has a kind of broad frame around it. And because I knew that this one is going to be a little bit smaller, I was able to go over this book page area with the twigs because I knew that there would be some room. I'm afraid that these, even though I really love the effect, well, I'll keep them. If they start breaking, then I'll can snip these darker places away. But I kind of like the little visual triangle coming from this tree because of the darkness. Reach over troubled water. <laughs> Thank you. Now I got what you meant, Karita. Probably this is the bridge and here's the water. I hope I got it right. A little arch bridge. <laughs> so here we have the two pages done with similar set steps or same steps but a little bit different with the composition and, and story. <laughs> yeah, I found it. Thanks. Actually, it's a nice way of thinking it. Them to overcoming something with the new coat. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Christine. If you have any questions, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat for a couple of days. If you're watching the recording, then just fire away and, well, have a nice evening. If you are in Europe and you are Eurovision fan, <laughs> then have a great, great show. Votes for Finland. <laughs> no, just kidding. But, well, have a great evening and or day, depending where you are. Thank you so much for coming again. And well, I'll be seeing you next month. Then we are doing, let me do a sneak peek, something like this. Did you see that? Was I too, ooh, too quick? Maybe a little bit slower, something like this. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be seeing you in June then. Have a great evening and thank you. Ja kiitoksia. Bye.